Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariungi. Welcome to our today's biology lesson. And today we are going to discuss transpiration. Um, first of all, uh, we know that uh, transpiration is a process that occurs in plants. And this process entails plants losing water. And this water is lost in form of water vapor to the atmosphere. So the plants lose water in form of water vapor to the atmosphere. Now, uh, this loss of water may occur through three main sites. One, it may occur through the stomata, what we refer to as stomato transpiration. It may also occur through the lenticels, also known as lenticular transpiration. And thirdly, it may also occur through the cuticle, also known as cuticular transpiration. So basically, I will start by defining transpiration and this is the loss of water in form of water vapor to the atmosphere. Then we'll have the sites for transpiration. There are three. One is the stomata. And this one we call it stomato transpiration. And this tomato transpiration accounts for about 90% of the water lost by plants. So majority of the water that is lost by plants is lost through the stomata. And we know that stomata are found in the leaves. Number two, we have the cuticle. And this one we call it cuticular transpiration. And this cuticular transpiration uh, as you said, occurs through the cuticle, and uh, these accounts for about or for less than 10% of the water that is lost. Then we have through the lenticels, what you are calling lenticular. Transpiration. So, our lenticels are loosely packed cells. That means they leave a lot of spaces. They are loosely packed cells found in stems of woody plants. So some woody plants, they have some cells uh, on their stem that are loosely packed and through those cells, uh, water can be lost. Uh, but we are saying that uh, the water loss here is very minimal. Water loss is very minimal. Now, 
Uh, having looked at uh, uh, the three sites for transpiration, uh, it is important uh, to also look at uh, how is transpiration important. So the importance of transpiration. And one, we know that uh, through transpiration, plants get rid of excess water. So plants get rid of excess water. If, for example, a plant is growing in a waterlogged area, it's able to get rid of the excess water. Uh, number two, it also it creates a cooling effect. Creates a cooling effect as water evaporates from the surfaces of the plant. Number three. Uh, that uh, transpiration uh, also creates, creates a pool that pulls water and mineral salts from the soil. So it creates what is called a transpiration pool. So as the leaves lose water through transpiration, there is a sanction force that is created that tends to pull the water and mineral salts from the lower parts of the plant. So this one creates a sanction force that draws water and mineral salts. into the plant. Now the next thing that we are going to look at as far as the transpiration is concerned, we look at the factors affecting transpiration. And these factors, we divide them into two. There is what you call the structural factors. For example, the size, number, and position of stomata. You can also talk about the leaf surface area, whether it's a broad or it's a narrow uh, leaf. We have hairy leaves. So all those are structure, they are structural factors within the leaf. Uh, we can also talk about the thickness of the cuticle. And so on and so forth. Then we have what we call the environmental factors. The environmental factors that affect transpiration, such as temperature, humidity, water availability, atmospheric pressure, wind. So basically, those are environmental factors. So we are saying that uh, in terms of the factors that affect transpiration, we have structural factors, the factors within the plant. These ones are within the plant. But environmental factors are outside the plant. They are in the environment, as the term uh, suggests. So basically, 
We have discussed transpiration as loss of water in form of water vapor to the atmosphere. We have uh, discussed the sites for transpiration, stomata, cuticle, and lenticels. The importance of transpiration, why is transpiration important? It helps to get rid of excess water, creates a cooling effect as the water evaporates, and also creates a sanction force that draws water and mineral salts from the soil. Then finally, we have looked at the factors that affect transpiration, the structural factors and the environmental factors. So next time we shall elaborate on these factors by explaining how they affect the rate of transpiration. So you're going to have an assignment. So the first question, what is transpiration? Number two, name three sites for transpiration in plants. And number three, give three importance of transpiration to plants. So we'll stop there until the next lesson. Goodbye. <laughs>